Hi, Hanchi Steve Kaufman here. Welcome to Hanchi's World. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about one of my books entitled Sword in the Boardroom. The premise behind Sword in the Boardroom is that it gives you a basis for winning negotiations. The whole idea behind it is winning negotiations, but winning for the benefit of all concerned, with yourself as the primary recipient of good. When you're in a conflict, or a negotiation. And a negotiation is a conflict, regardless of how you look at it. Somebody's got to come out winning. You've got to take into consideration the needs of all the people you're dealing with, including yourself. If you don't take this attitude of winning for the benefit of all concerned, and you try to force your hand then you are going to overlook certain things, and perhaps because of coercion, you're going to create dissension between you and the person you're dealing with. So, well, you know, he's not going to give us this, but like, ah, we better do it because of this, that, and the other thing. We'll get him later. You want to make sure that the negotiations are cut and dry, specific and exact, without any room for doubt or misunderstanding. Once you do this, you are automatically winning for the benefit of all concerned with yourself as the primary recipient of all good. And it's amazing to me that most politicians, most business people, most people in any form of negotiation don't take into consideration the needs of the people they are negotiating with. And therefore, perhaps based on the idea that they are much stronger financially, much stronger militarily, much stronger psychologically, they can force the opposition or the person they're dealing with to cower under their own insecurity. This does not get anything done. All this does is create more and more disharmony in the same way that when you are coming up with an idea for a product or a project, you don't want to compete. You do not want to compete. Once you compete, you're looking to cheapen someone else's efforts and energy. And that just creates greed, avarice, and all of these other things that are involved with that. You want to create. Creation is the primary impetus of life. Competition is not. Just because you think that you can do something better than someone else and hurt them in the process does not benefit mankind. Now, I'm not talking as a utopian paradigm here. I'm talking for the reality of the world we live in and the environment you live in and whatever culture that you're associated with that enables you to advance to higher levels of consciousness. This is not high talk. This is straight ahead common sense. And if you don't think of it as common sense, you're going to try to be slick. And the more you try to be slick, you're going to try to be slick until you become slick and you start using all kinds of clever little things that create tension and stress in you. Don't think in terms of instant wealth based on the idea of you're just going to turn around and there it is. Think in terms of instant wealth, but think in terms of instant wealth based on the idea that you are going to forge ahead with full force and your own personal authority and create your own wealth and create your own environment and create your own universe. That approach to it gives you more inner success, gives you more of a feeling of accomplishment and creates harmony and at the same time with rectitude and focus of your integrity, you will accomplish a lot more and you will gain a lot more. Musashi, Sun Tzu, and myself. What is interesting here is that, first of all, having studied this for many, many years, I understand where Musashi is coming from. I understand where Sun Tzu is coming from. And I certainly understand where I'm coming from and looking to get to. Musashi talks about individual combat. Sun Tzu talks about management. The book itself is written as a conversation between the three of us 
And therefore, Musashi speaks in his voice, Sun Tzu in his, and I certainly speak in mine. When you are involved with high power negotiation and enterprise control, it's essential that you take into consideration the profound teachings of the masters. I mean, they've lasted for thousands of years. There's an obvious reason, but it is also important that you do not misunderstand their meaning. And this is a very, very important thing. For example, a lot of people think that the Book of Five Rings is a book of killing, a book about killing. On base levels, it is. But when you look into it more deeply, you will see that it is how to destroy, if you will, the negative situations that hold you back from accomplishing your ideal. Musashi calls it practice and constant reevaluation of your own ideals and reevaluation of your thoughts. You have to understand your motivation. Sun Tzu talks about managing the environment how to deal with other people, how to look at a situation that could be causing disharmony. Essentially, Musashi and Sun Tzu are talking about the same thing from a different perspective. Because the reality of wisdom is that it all leads to the same place. How one person defines something, how another person defines something, as long as their own inner intention suggests a higher level of self-enlightenment, it's valid. It's valid. If you're going to look at certain ideas and say, well, I don't have to practice. I don't have to get ready for this. I just go in there, boom, I can eat this guy up. This is a fool's mission. You must know your reasons for doing something. You must know the opposition's reasons for not doing something. And you've got to understand the purpose of the encounter. The best way to do this is to prepare yourself. Again, as I mentioned before, you've got to know where you're going, know what you're doing. You know, what's that tune? Know when to hold them, know when to fold them. And know when to not even get into the game. See, this takes maturity, this takes wisdom, this takes personal understanding. This is based on an understanding of who you are, what you are, where you're going, what you want to do. There are variations of perfection. My idea of perfection and your idea of perfection are two different things, unless we come together. And if we do come together, we've got to negotiate for the benefit of all concerned. With each one of us getting exactly what we want. And this is not impossible. This is not impossible. As long as you maintain a perspective of reality and don't try to impose your will. There is never a need to impose your will. The warrior mentality. What is the warrior mentality? The warrior mentality is very simply, I win. I win. If you come into the negotiation without a mentality of winning, then why are you doing that? Man? What, are you, what are you talking about? So therefore, if I understand your motivation and you understand my motivation, it is easy to iron out any wrinkles in between. We want to do this. What is it that we have got to do for you that will enable you to give us what we need? What is so hard about this, man? What do you want? World War III? You're not going to have World War III. As a matter of fact, you probably have the apocalypse. And forget about this December uh, 2012 nonsense, okay? You know what's going to happen the day after the end of the world? You're still going to get your phone bill. You have to develop certain qualities of leadership. Leadership insists that you are able to follow. If you are not able to follow, you don't know how to lead, and the reason you can't lead if you don't follow is because you don't know where you're going. You may have an idea for something and go there by yourself, possibly. But if you're leading others, they have got to see rationality and sanity behind what you're telling them to do. I know you're going to get a lot of people that are going to do whatever you want to do. Hey, he's paying us, man. Do what he wants them to do. It's not going to work anyway. So if that's your attitude, that you're going to inculcate that way of thinking into the fo folks that are following you, it won't hold. You build from the ground up. You don't build from the sky down. It's essential that you have contingency plans. 
Contingency plans mean that you really are going in this direction. You've explained what you're doing to your people and you're moving ahead. Something's not happening. And they're in agreement with you, but something's not happening. For whatever reason that you, being human, may have overlooked, will not take into consideration. That being the case, you have to have an alternative. You know what, let's go back and start all over again. No, you never start all over again. What you do is you continue on from where you are and change structure where it is important to do so. Don't force something to happen. It's like a rubber band. You're forcing it out, you let it go. Boom, it comes back together. That's not the way to do things. I mean, and this, you gotta understand something. This is not just something I came up with. I understand from my own experiences in life, both good and bad, and what's involved with seeing something through to a logical, intelligent conclusion. You must make sure that you don't have any preconceived ideas about anything. Hey, if I do this, that's gonna happen. No, if I do this, we will see how it opens up and develops. And as you continue along, again, here's your contingency plans, you make adjustments where required because there is no way you are ever going to realize your perfect dream. It, be aware. Be aware of what you're doing and where you're going. You have to be rooted in reality. Now, you create your own reality, yeah, you know, by your divine right to live in joy and freedom. But your reality has got to be real. It can't be like, well, if I do this, I'm going to get $20 million and 40,000 people to follow me in five minutes. And even so, it is based on the idea that you have put the thought into it behind it. Whether you're even aware of it or not aware of it. So it's better to be aware of what you're doing than not aware of what you're doing. You know, you don't want things to just turn out by chance and say, hey, this happened. It's like, you know, beginner's luck. It doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Because beginner's luck is an indication to you that something can be developed. You build your business block by block. It's as simple as that. Why do you think all these ancient teachers say, look, go to a place where it's silent. Let all these crazy thoughts go through you. You can't block them out. But you cannot turn your mind off. You're going to constantly get thoughts. It's as you direct your thoughts that you will generate the process of creation. That's how that works. That's very simple. Strategy has to be well thought out. If the strategy is not well thought out, you're just taking a shot. If you're just taking shots, you're going to hit, you're going to miss. You don't have to do that. I'm, you know, it's not that I'm saying that you have to become a control freak, but what you have to become is aware of yourself. What did you do that created that result that you didn't want? Well, very simply, with a self-revealization acceptance, you create the environment in your mind by saying, whatever it is that I did wrong or incorrectly to bring about this result does not occur again. The idea of it is denied total authority Instead, I now have the proper instructions and guidance of the spirit of the thing itself of whatever it is you're doing. Because everything that's outside of the physical is mental, spiritual. You contact your inner self and talk. Says it. What is it that I have to do? Now, whatever it is that you have to do with sending up a question, the question has got to go to the creative power of the universe. So what I want you to do, I want you to read The Sword in the Boardroom. You can find out more about the book by going to my website, www.hanshi.com. You can read snippets of it. I like that word, snippets. By going to my writer's blog, Hanshi Books, H-A-N-S-H-I-B-O-O-K-S, dot wordpress dot com. There's a lot going on in the universe. All you have to do is come to terms with the fact that the universe was created specifically and exactly for you. Once you understand that the universe was created specifically and exactly for you, you're also going to know that the universe was created specifically and exactly for everyone else. And therefore, there is never a need for conflict. Never a need for conflict. 
And with that mentality, when you approach a situation, you do win for the benefit of all concerned with yourself as the primary recipient of good. See you next time.